Well, it's spring trading day up the lodge. Oh, Uncle Red, why can't you guys do spring cleaning like everybody else? Just throw out junk. No, Harold, with spring trading, see, the thing is you can uh, get rid of all that stuff you've hoarded over the winter by trading it for something else, you know? The trick is to make the best trades. Oh, I see. Okay, there you go. How come everything has to be a competition with you guys? There always has to be a winner and a loser, you know? You just can't cheer for your hockey team. Oh, no. You gotta pick out individuals, make a pool, go for that. Everybody cheers for everybody that way, huh? <laughs> then you go out and you spend all that money on the sports lottery tickets. No way, then you don't even care who wins the game that way. It's just stupid. You lost again, eh? 20 straight weeks in a row. <laughs> show, Hap tries to convince us that he used to wrestle elephants. I'm going to scour my workbench for a special kind of tape for duct work. Dalton's going to talk about the facts of life. And I'm going to fish something off the bottom of Possum Lake that's not a stove or a snowmobile. This has to be my worst spring trading ever. You know, I got there late, and the only guy with stuff left to trade was old man Sedgwick. Look at this crap. Half a railing, a bent hose clamp. Bunch of vanilla beans, I hope. Look at this, Uncle Red. Picture of a possum. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what? This could be like the Possum Lodge possum. Yeah, 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 no, it could be, yeah. I mean, this, this possum picture is like a piece of history to a collector. It's worth like, you know, 70, 80 cents. Well, that's an aerial photo of Possum Lake. That's all it is. <laughs> no, it's the Possum Lodge possum. That X is his eye. Wouldn't the X be in the head, Harold? <laughs> okay, yeah, well, then what's this X? Well, I guess that's old man Sedgwick's signature. <laughs> treasure! It's treasure! Oh, oh yes! It could be valuable treasure! And that X marks the spot of valuable treasure at the bottom of Possum Lake. Oh, <laughs> oh Harold, oh. No. We thought of that. Oh, we thought of that, Harold, but what did old man Sedgwick have of value 50 years ago? Maybe his mind. <laughs> Do other lodge members know about this picture? Well, they all know about it, and they don't care, Harold. We're too busy to be bothered with some supposed sunken treasure. We got important things to do. Oh, yeah, like what specifically? Just things, that's all, Harold. Important things, big things. You wouldn't understand, it's things men do. Over eating, sleeping in, watching TV, drinking beer, fixing cars. Pretty much covers it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now to get ready for adventures with Bill a bit later in the show, Bill is building a little duck blind. The point here is to be totally invisible. <laughs> I think he's done an excellent job. I don't think I saw him, did I? No. <laughs> All right there, Bill. Come on. You're all right, aren't you? Hey, it's a duck blind. You're supposed to duck. <laughs> oh, you're fine. <laughs> Welcome to the expert portion of the show. And on this week's expert portion of the show, we have experts, my uncle Red, and his good friend, Dalton Humphrey. Okay, first question goes as follows. Dear experts, la la la. All right. <laughs> Excellent one, okay. How old should a child be before you explain the facts of life to them? <laughs> well, Harold, this really depends on the maturity of the child. Some of them are ready at 13, others aren't ready until, uh, well, how old are you, Harold? 19. Until they're 21. <laughs> and I'll tell you, this is one job that no parent wants to do. I'm really glad I won't have to explain the facts of life to any. Well, well Dalton, uh, how old was your daughter when you told her about the birds and the bees? Well, that's the wife's job, Red. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, the dad tells the son, wife tells the daughter, right. kind of the natural order of things. And, uh, well, your dad talked to you, right? Well, no, he just uh, gave me a book by Mickey Splane called Kiss Me Deadly. <laughs> and he said, this is what married people do. I thought he meant shoot each other and have car chases. <laughs> That's pretty much what his relatives did. No. Mr. Humphrey, how old was your daughter Tabitha when you know what your wife told her about the fact <laughs> about the, uh, the, the, you know, the... the Yeah, about it. When she, how, old, how old was she when she heard oh, about it? She hasn't yet. Tabitha's only 20. There's <laughs> no rush. But uh, uh, well, she has a boyfriend, doesn't she, Dalton? <laughs> so? <laughs> you know what? It's puppy love, Red. Totally oh, innocent. All right. You know what? I, I don't think they even kiss yet. <laughs> I just thought, you know, because they moved in together. You know, <laughs> Well, yeah, but that, that, that doesn't mean anything. Oh, he sleeps on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 
Her mother will talk to her when the time's right, all right? Well, I hope she can get her attention in the delivery room. <laughs> I've asked lots of men what's the thing they like most. Oh, oh. Hunting or fishing or peanut butter on toast. Oh, oh. The most popular answer from each time I've asked is whatever I'm doing. I like to go fast. He likes to go fast. Yeah. Driving a car or riding a bike. Eating my dinner or taking a hike. Speed is the thrill that makes all men glad. Except when we've fallen off the roof, in which case we'd like gravity to just ease off on the throttle a tad. <laughs> All right, maybe I didn't have too much luck at this year's spring trading, but I'll tell you something. The true handyman makes his own luck, and often his own bandages. <laughs> All right, I couldn't get rid of these two clothes dryers and this bicycle, so I guess you could say I'm stuck with them. Well, then, why not turn them into something useful? I think it was Shakespeare that said, you can't make a silk ear out of a sow's purse. <laughs> Maybe that was Sir Francis Bacon. <laughs> but didn't he also say, you can make an electric lawn roller out of just about anything, and it's dead easy. <laughs> First step, you gotta chop them down a little bit. So the drum will uh, sit right there on the ground. See here, this is how they look when they're chopped and channeled with the chrome lifters and the her shifter on them there. Kind of a beautiful unit, don't you think? couple of laps on your yard and this thing, and your grass will be smooth enough to golf on. All right, once I get that one done, I need something to connect it to, so I'm gonna use this bike, kind of stick her in here. I could attach it with uh, spot welding or stove bolts or, hey, how about the handyman's secret weapon? Duct tape. <laughs> All right, now I got the bicycle mounted onto my two dryers here, and uh, here's a word of caution. Actually, a little mistake that I made. Make sure you get a comfortable seat, not one of these darn racing seats. We're looking at a major wedgie in my near future right here. You know, the reason they call them banana seats is because they have to peel you off of them. <laughs> Another thing you want to think about is that the dryers, uh, the exhaust of them gives off a lot of the fabric softener fumes. You don't want to be breathing that in. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to mount a couple of exhaust pipes using some of the standard uh, duct uh, work from the dryer here. And I just need something to tape the duct work together. Uh, some kind of tape for duct work. <laughs> here we go. Adhesive tape, that'll be perfect. Just uh, mount these on here, boy. Look at that, eh? Nothing says power like dual exhaust. Just screams, eat my lint. <laughs> here we go, got her all mounted up there. Now, I'm gonna be rolling the lawn, so I got her set on permanent press. But when I get to the garden beds, I'll flip over to the delicate cycle. <laughs> Another thing, you know, inside the dryer, you got a lot of air blowing around in there, and you got one of these lint filters. So That's an ideal opportunity. Throw some grass seed in there, pop that baby in there, and you can actually be rolling and seeding all at the same time. <laughs> and I got her hardwired into the house with plenty of cord for maneuverability. She's a beauty, isn't she? Also make a dandy little steamroller, even a leaf press. So remember, if women don't find you handsome, They should at least find you handy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get rolling. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, she rolled. <laughs> Stay tuned to find out about Ranger Gord's imaginary friend. Yikes. Wow, well, this aerial photo with the accident has got everybody convinced there's something valuable at the bottom of Possum Lake. Hey, you said the guys weren't interested in it. Well, no, they weren't until they found out that you were, Harold. You know, I mean, <laughs> that competition thing kicks in, you know. It's not that they really think they'll find treasure, they just can't stand the thought that somebody else might. No, <laughs> no way, they had their chance. No way, you said they weren't interested. I know, well, they just don't want to look like idiots. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so now there's a big competition to see who can dive the deepest to find the treasure. Dive the deepest? I swam out there and my feet touched the bottom. No, 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 your feet might have touched, but that wasn't the bottom. That was just, you know, stuff. Oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, OK, 
okay, well, fine then. I'll just lower my brand new video camera down there. <laughs> no, I, I tried that, Harold, and, and all I got was just darkness. You know? Shows what you know. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, maybe you just had the, the, the uh, waterproof case on backwards. <laughs> waterproof case? Where's that? <laughs> well, you know, Red, for all the forest beauty, it can be one of the most dangerous places on the face of the earth. Well, then I'm just thinking maybe we just stop here, just hold everything for a minute here, and you give the people some of the rules about being in the forest. Maybe some of you folks at home might want to jot a few of these down. Excellent idea. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's really only one rule that'll save your life when you're in the forest. All right. Never come out alone. Always have a buddy with you, okay? Okay, just, you know, in case something goes wrong or something bad That's happens right. or whatever. That's right, your buddy will help you out, or at least you'll have somebody to blame the problem on. <laughs> No, I'm serious. There. <laughs> you know what? I'm thinking some of the viewers will be saying, wait, wait a second here, this is ironic. Ranger Gord can't even take his own advice. You don't have a buddy, do you? Oh. No? No. <laughs> I see what you're thinking. Oh, and yeah, in yeah. fact, I do. Come right over here, I'll show you my buddy. Wow. Yep, right over there on the horizon. Yep. You see it? The Port Asbestos Lookout. That's my buddy. That's Ranger Vince. Now, every night for the past 12 years, Ranger Vince and I have been turning on each other's lights. I'll turn on my lights, he turns on his lights. And it's just the two Rangers looking over at each other saying, hey, buddy, I've never met you, but I'm there for you. Uh, uh, Gordon? You know, I've never met Ranger Vince, but I feel I know him. Uh, now, he's my buddy, yeah. Ranger Vince. Yeah, uh, uh, um, there's something I need to tell you about that. Uh... Uh, uh, Ranger Vince is, he's actually not, he's uh, actually not, uh, he's not actually in there. Uh, he left that tower 12, uh, maybe 13 years ago. Uh, the loneliness, you know, was, he, he wasn't like you. He couldn't take it. And, and he, and that's a, I think that's just, I think a radio transmitter at this point. No. Yeah. You see, that's not true because every night I see him turn on his lights. Uh, when I okay, turn on okay, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. So, fair enough, fair enough. But there again, that would be a remote control unit. They just, uh, Click the lights on from somewhere else, uh, just so the planes won't smack into the tower as much as they used to. <laughs> That's all that. Vince is gone. He's, he's, he's toast. He's taillights. He's in the wind. He's, he's gone. He's out of there. No Vince? There's no Vince over there, as far as I know. Vince! No. no. <laughs> I've been alone for but you, 12 years. No, but you're doing great. You're doing great. No, you're doing... <laughs> you're doing really well. You're doing really well. Somebody please hug Okay. <laughs> No, 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 let's not. I feel no, 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 no. Hey, I know, I know, I know. Oh, hug my buddy, Harold. Let me go there. Sorry, Harold. <laughs> well, you're in the soup this time, aren't you? You agreed to meet her at a certain time and a certain place, and you forgot. <laughs> and you remembered, hey, an hour after the fact. But by then, you're over the other side of town, halfway through a hamburger. And so she's standing out there, stomping around, getting mad, knee high in the snow, and you're in deep sleep. Buddy. All right, here's what you do. Go to your vehicle, give yourself a flat tire. Slash it. Poke it. Shoot it. Whatever. Whatever it takes, exactly. Yep. And if you've got a perfectly inflated, unused spare tire, flatten that as well. There go. Just like that. What this does is, it makes your situation more miserable than hers. <laughs> And that just gives her all the power to be forgiving, which gets you off the hook. By the time you get home, you'll be the one getting the sympathy. <laughs> oh, sure, you know, you're gonna have to call a tow truck guy and get towed off to the garage. Hey, wait a minute. That's fun. Oh, yeah, but don't tell her that. Right. <laughs> Uncle Red, Uncle Red, look at this, look at this. This picture is dated 1943. <laughs> Guess what old man Cedric was doing in 1943? Avoiding World War II. <laughs> no, no, no. He was too old to serve. No, he was working in the railroad. Working on the railroad. So what I figure I'll do is I'll go down and I'll check out all the old newspapers from 1943. Check out the headlines, you know? Something like, uh, Railway Payroll Vanishes. <laughs> you know, uh, treasure Train Topples into Lake. <laughs> well, Harold, if you're looking for newspapers, we've got a bunch in our mattresses, you know, you can use. No, but thank you. I think what I'll do is uh, I'll just go down to the library in town. Library? There's no library in town, Harold. Across from, from the, the Great Hall. You know that old yellow building? That's a library? <laughs> yeah, that's a why, why are you dressed like this, Uncle Red? Well, you know, the bunch of us are going to go scuba diving for the treasure, and uh, nobody has any rubber clothing, at least not that they use for scuba diving. <laughs> and, uh, so now we got a real competition going to see who can make the most waterproof wetsuit. <laughs> Uncle Red, that's a snowmobile suit. 
You can't wear that into Possum Lake. I do every winter. <laughs> Hi again, Ranger Gord at Fire Watch Tower 13 reminding you, never ever try to feed a bear, never tease a bear, and never ever try to dance with a bear. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Well, as I was explaining earlier, Bill had uh, built a duck blind uh, because he had gotten some stuff in the spring trading. Uh, he'd gotten some optical stuff, uh, some little binoculars there, which he'd lent to me very kindly. But look at the look at the unit he had there. Wow. <laughs> wow. Don't look at the sun, Bill. <laughs> oh, there's a bird. There's a bird. Oh. oh. My golly, and they're heavy. You hit me there, Bill. You hit me with the. You hit me. You hit me with Shh. the. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another one. There's another one. Oh, oh. All right, try that on. Huh? How's that feel? How do you like that? Give me another one. Give me another one. Give me another one. Give me one. Oh, oh. Oh, my gosh. It's one last bird. He was old. No, no, no. Ow. Oh, get that up. No. Hey, those are mine. Well, you get your own. You gave me those, Bill. You get something else. Not my problem. All right. Oh, he's got a camera. You got no lens in that camera, Bill. There's no lens in there. That's just an open, there's, you gotta put a lens in that thing. You haven't even got a lens, have you? Oh, yes, you do. Oh, my gosh, look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. That's a beauty. Boy, you'll be able to take the telephoto uh, shots with that, aren't you? Be careful with that, Bill. Yeah, how's that bird look? Oh. <laughs> Give me that, you're dangerous. Give me that, give me that, give me that, give me that. I'll get rid of that. There, oh. how's that feel? Get rid of it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, there goes another one. Okay. Where are the birds? Where's all the birds, Bill? I don't hear anything. None. Where'd they go? You look that way. I'll look this way. No birds. Well, now we get into, you know, whose fault it is. And it's not, I don't know. I don't want to blame. I'm not going to. I'm not here. It's just not. I know it's not my fault. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that necessarily. Well, okay, maybe I, I might have I might have implied that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> no, I thought. Oh, no, oh, they're there. Oh, boy, they sound close. What the heck is it? Oh, for gosh sakes! I think there's some birds possibly. I'm gonna die there. I'm gone. I'm gone. Bill, they went that way. Oh, it's a sign of trail. Might be following a little too close there, Bill. <laughs> Stay tuned for the most amazing story since Hap spoke last. I'll tell you, the various uh, homemade wetsuits were all a disaster. Junior Sinkman made himself an electrically heated unit. <laughs> he was down there and caught the crotch of her on a stove and, man, lit the whole place up. You can see the whole... <laughs> see the whole bottom of the lake was like a junkyard down there. But it doesn't matter. We have now switched to Plan B. Well, that's good. Yeah, Plan B. Plan B's good. Yeah, yeah. Moose Thompson and I have got ourselves a 100-foot sewer pipe. We're going to get that up on its end, drop it right down, right down onto where the treasure is. Then we're going to pump all the water out from the inside of her, climb down, and just pick the treasure right off the dry bottom. <laughs> well, that sounds, um, good. Do you have a plan C? <laughs> we don't need it, Harold. Is there anything in the, in the old paper there to give us kind of a clue of what we're going to find? No, there's nothing at all in this 1943 paper about sunken treasure. Just, there's nothing in here. No mention of anything. Not even the war. It's awful. Look at this. This local farmer dies of scurvy. <laughs> Town council votes down electric power. 1932 Packard for sale. Harold, that's today's paper. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, here I am with uh, Hap Shaughnessy. What are we trying to catch today, Hap? Pickerel, Red. All right. Uh, a real fighting fish. Oh, yeah? Would you say the pickerel is the hardest fighter you've ever faced? Hardest fighting fish I faced? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mind you, they're not as hard as uh, wrestling on elephants. <laughs> no. No, I guess not. <laughs> Been a while since I've done that. Well, that was before they banned elephant wrestling. That was a lot of fun for a while, though. And the pay was good. But, you know, we elephant wrestlers never got the respect that we should have got from the other athletes. This is after they, they made us a demonstration sport at the 1956 Olympics <laughs> in Oslo. Oslo, Norway? Yeah. Well, that would be the Winter Olympics, Hap. I believe wrestling is a summer event, isn't it? 
wrestling yeah. is a summer event. That's what yeah. I said, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is elephant wrestling, right? Done on ice to make it more exciting. <laughs> wow. I would think that'd be very tiring to bring down an animal that size by yourself, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, luckily it was a tag match. <laughs> I'd wear him down, my partner Wally would go in and get him to the breaking point, and then I'd go in for the final takedown. You pinning an elephant, huh? huh? That's got to be the biggest whopper you've ever laid out. <laughs> it's, it's all in the technique. You use the elephant's strength against himself. You get him off balance. You get under the tusk, and you pull on the trunk, and you push up. Bam. And over he goes. <laughs> or her. Or them. I've seen me do a couple. <laughs> you got to find a whole new technique for the next match, because an elephant never forgets. No, I envy them that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a small pipe wrench. This is a medium pipe wrench. This is a lost pipe wrench. <laughs> you found it? You found it? You actually found the treasure? Oh, that's excellent! Oh, let's see, let's see, okay. let's see, let's okay. see, let's see. Get ready, get ready, get ready for it, Harold. Get ready, get ready. You ready? You ready, Harold? Yeah, ready. yeah. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Huh? Huh? <laughs> that's it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, it just showed up uh, in, the, in the photo because, uh, well, it was there. I guess Possum Lake was a lot clearer back in those days. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not going to be worth much. Well, we found it and you didn't, so that has some value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, to a moron. <laughs> I know what you're saying, but it's not for sale. <laughs> Meeting time, Uncle Rod. Way to go, Harold. Have a good time. I'll be down in a minute. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meet, then I'll tell you something. I'm not nearly as concerned about what's at the bottom of the lake as I am as what's at the bottom of my heart. Of course, onions always do that to me. <laughs> for the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Boston Lodge, you keep your stick on the ice. Lake last night. Is the owner here now? Raise your hand if you left your car in Boston Lake.